Hello and welcome to the Unibet Road to Rio preview show, a road that will be anything but pedestrian as we head towards what many consider to be the spiritual home of football. Two connoisseurs of European and world football join me in the studio. I've got Raphael Hornigstein and Julian Laurence alongside me on Skype video call. Tactics guru Jonathan Wilson, Brazilian football expert Jack Lang and a man who went to the World Cup with his country, Norway, it's Ronnie Jonsson. Rafael, as a, as a child, was there one point at which the World Cup was particularly important to you? Yes, in 1982, my earliest memory is me crying very heavily when uh, Germany were beaten by Italy. I remember vividly that uh, the world ended for me uh, that day, but the World Cup as a spectacle began. Is there a point in, in every football lover's childhood that they remember one specific thing, do you think, from the World Cup? Yeah, I do think. I'm, I'm obviously much younger than Rafa, so uh, my first memory is 1990 in, in Italy, but as a Frenchman, 1998 is obviously very special because it's, it's the, the year we won the World Cup. Uh, so very few people, Ronnie, actually get to watch a World Cup and then later in their life go and play in it. So what was it when you were young that was so special about the World Cup? Special about the World Cup is uh, it's it's a big big stage. Uh, you can you can be in as a football uh, being there uh, representing your country. It's a proud proud moment for, for all the players who can who can be there. Okay, is there anything particular sticks in your mind? I think you know watching Maradona uh, playing. It was uh, I think uh, that was one of my first memories of the World Cup. So we know how the groups are, and we also know all the fixtures through the group stages. So the next question is, which fixture are you most looking forward to? I'll go for Germany against Portugal. I think it's just a, a, an incredible game so early on in the competition as well. This is the kind of game that usually you find in a semi-final or even a final. But it's, yeah, it's two great teams, two uh, cracking squads and, and, and good managers as well. And you don't really know how you pan out. So uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Oh, I would pick Spain against uh, the Netherlands. Of course, a bit of revenge, possibly, for the Netherlands after the 2010 final. But then again, uh, Spain might uh, think back to how that final was conducted and think there is still a, uh, one or two bills to be settled. So Group A features the hosts, Brazil, and it is all or nothing for them, uh, particularly when you look at the knockout stages and the possible permutations. So I guess the first thing we'll ask Brazilian football expert Jack Lang is, are they ready, Jack? I think they're more ready than they have been for, for a long time. But the last two years, 18 months or so, have been fantastic for Brazil. They've, a, a team has really come together, as they showed at the Confederations Cup last summer. There's experience, there's youth, there's, uh, you know, you have talented players in defence, Thiago Silva, David Luiz, Neymar up front. The crowd is going to be behind them, perhaps more than many expected it to be, because before the Confederations Cup, it was a team that hadn't played a great deal at home over the previous years. The one thing we didn't see in the Confederations Cup is what happens if they go behind. In the five games, they were ahead within 10 minutes in three of the games and before half-time in the other two. So say after an hour, if it's nil-nil, or if, if they do go behind, what's the crowd's move then? They're up against Croatia in the opening game of the World Cup, a team that a few of their stars were very familiar with. Mm. In the big curtain opener for this World Cup, are they going to provide what we want? Croatia have shown in 2006 that they can spoil Brazil. Uh, Brazil never really recovered from that first game against Croatia in, in Germany and then had an ultimately disastrous World Cup. So mm. that will be the back of the mind somewhere. But I'm not necessarily convinced that Croatia themselves are defensively strong enough to withstand uh, Brazil for the entire 90 minutes. But they should get out of the group. Unibet are offering odds, actually, on passes completed by players in this game, with Modric uh, being one of the players being offered as an ultimate, as a great ball retainer for, for club. Do you think that Modric will be able to set a benchmark? Yeah, I think the line is 85, and I'm not quite convinced simply because I don't think he'll see that much of the ball. He dictates play for Real Madrid, but I think Croatia will have very little of the ball in that game. Ronnie, is, it, is pressure the only issue for you, really, uh, with, with regards to how Brazil do in the group stage? Well, I think Brazil is going to go through here uh, easily. Uh, yeah. I think they're going to, I think Cameroon is going to follow them, to be honest. I don't think uh, Croatia are good enough defensively. Now's as good a time as ever to talk about Unibet's injury time insurance. If a goal is scored in injury time, we will refund losing bets in certain markets. So, Jonathan, do you think we'll expect anything different from Spain this tournament? Every time Del Bosque speaks, he talks about control and he wants to control games and that for him means controlling possession. So 
I think the underlying principle will be the same. Uh, I find it actually slightly strange at this late stage, they're still talking about integrating Diego Costa. It seems like something that should have been done a long time ago. Um, but he, you know, he is there, and, and he is a second option if they find themselves frustrated with, with, with a tiki-taka. Well, I guess we're going to get an idea when Spain and the Netherlands meet, which has got to be one of the, the fixtures of the opening group stages. Yes, but arguably the key player is missing in Kevin Strosman. I mean, he is the heart of that team, or he was the heart of the team, and I think it's going to be very interesting what they do. Obviously, that change towards a 5-3-2, if they keep playing over a 3-5-2 in possession, is designed to, to an extent to fill the midfield more because before that, Strootman was doing the role or the work for two or three people. Mm. Now they don't really have that kind of uh, dominant figure. Uh, without that protection, without that cohesion, I think it's going to be a little bit tough against the better sides. That's, that's why a lot of people think that the Dutch might not make it out of this group. I still think they have a chance, but it's between them and Chile, and Chile are incredibly tough and incredibly good. So almost too close to call for me. Jack, you're nodding. Um, do you agree that Chile will be the second team out of Group B? If so, why? I think I think the Netherlands will have just enough to, to sneak through at Chile's expense. I think Chile are an exciting team, very intense, a lot of pressing, a lot of speed in attack. But I think there are too many question marks at the back. And I think Netherlands, Netherlands will just have a little bit too much big tournament now for, for them. And I think they'll go through with Spain. OK. Uh, Spain first out of the group tends to be, uh, tends to be the general consensus uh, with either the Netherlands or Chile. And we haven't even factored in the idea that Australia could get a shock draw against any of those teams and cause a huge upset. Uh, but of course, whoever comes second in Group B is quite likely to face the host Brazil in the first round of the knockout stages. <laughs> So the big question is who will get out of Group D, one of the hardest groups to predict, one of the closest in terms of the odds as well. Um, England are in there as well as Uruguay, Italy and Costa Rica. Um, now, of course, it, it probably, Rafael, first of all, can't get any worse than 2010 for England, can it? Um, it can if they get knocked out in the group stage, which uh, is possible, but they have to play a lot better and they can't afford to start as slowly as they did in the last few tournaments where they were really abysmal. Let's start with England then, Jack. Do you think, um, we've got a question from Twitter about whether Roy Hodgson is taking a risk taking such a young squad to Brazil. There's a, a core of players, of ageing players, who have systematically not performed at the biggest tournaments. And I think given that the, the young players are those who are performing best at club level, you should pick on form, and if those players happen to be young, I think, uh, I think it's the right thing to do. Maybe a tougher group will uh, serve to manage the expectation yeah. of what England can do than compared to 2010 when they were expected to make it out of the group. Does it for you sit with three contenders for those two spots and, and no favourite for you or what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I agree, I agree with Rafa. I think that the key team is Costa Rica because I think everything will be decided in the game against Costa Rica. I can definitely see three draws between Italy, Uruguay and, and England and then it will all be down to how much you win if you win against Costa Rica, how many goals you scored and I think it could all be decided with that. Jonathan, in Group D, one of your predictions on the road to Rio is a one-all draw between England and Uruguay. How key is this in the, in the outcome of the group as a whole, do you feel? I think it's vital. I think, I think Italy will go through and it's between England and Uruguay for the other place. Uh, I think England have a huge advantage in playing Costa Rica last, so it may be a case of knowing how many they, they need to beat Costa Rica by. Ronnie, one of the questions I'd like to ask you about L Luis Suarez. As a former defender, what advice would you give to anyone who's going to have to mark him? <laughs> well, it's going to be difficult because he's uh, he's one of one you know very good player. Has it how it done in, in Liverpool uh, uh, this season? Been absolutely fantastic. Uh, but I also think that uh, the Liverpool guys being in, the, in, the, in England uh, can lift England's England as well. You know, uh, uh, Uruguay is struggling at the back, uh, so. In my book, uh, I think uh, England and Italy is, uh, is going through in, in, this, uh, in this group. We're going to take a look now at groups E and F. The big teams, really, that we should talk about is uh, France and Argentina. So we'll start in Group E. France have Switzerland, they have Ecuador, they have Honduras. I mean, that draw really tough. was quite, quite favourable. It's really tough. It's really tough. No, we were lucky. What can I say? We were lucky. Yes. Question on Twitter to you about the French team in this campaign and who you think their star players will be. Paul Pogba, 
although it's maybe a little bit early in his career because he's still very young, but I can definitely see him really exploding during this World Cup. And France playing that 4 3 3 formation that suits him so well. I think he's going to be really good. He's on good form. He has he's, he's full fitness and I think full of confidence as well. And I think it could be his World Cup. So now the question with this group is who comes out of this group behind France? Uh, Jack, because of the, uh, they're likely to meet Argentina in the, in the knockout stages. Yeah, I, I feel it's a fairly straight battle between Switzerland and Ecuador. I don't feel that Honduras can really gatecrash the party. Do you fancy Ecuador behind um, France no, or Switzerland? No, I think Switzerland might even push France hard for the first spot. They've got a very good record against France. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got really exciting young players going forward, like Shakiri, Drimic. Uh, they're very solid, very defensive. I think this is a very kind group to them and they should really do one better and make it to the last 16. All right, so Group F then, are, Argentina are very, very fan, uh, heavily fancied to top that group. Um, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Iran and Nigeria are their opposition. I think uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina are a team that can push Argentina or... Uh, Rafi, already shaking your head. Uh, before <laughs> they go to the knockout stages. Uh, I don't quite think they, they are that good. They, they have talent up front, of course. They have Dzeko, they have Ibisevic, they have Miralem Pjanic. Those three can cause a lot of damage. But there isn't really all that behind them. And I think Nigeria actually have a chance of making it out of the group ahead of them. And we're going to turn our attention, Jonathan, to Argentina. Uh, traditionally a 4-3-3 for them. Uh, can we expect the same kind of solid foundation? It seems a paradox, but it's, it's probably the most predictable starting line of first 11 uh, for the first game. And yet it's an 11 that's only played together once before. Uh, the only question mark is Fernando Gargo, who's coming back from an injury, playing the right side of midfield. Uh, Mascherano sits in front of the back four. Di Maria playing to the left, much as he does for Real Madrid, and that's sort of shuttling role, well, that shuttling role between the midfield and the front line. And that incredibly gifted forward line, Iguain in the middle, Messi to the right and Aguero to the left. I mean, Messi has been the greatest player on the planet for years with Ronaldo snapping at his heels. But he really, it's kind of now or never for him, isn't it? I'm not quite sure that uh, Messi, Messi's standing in world football will necessarily depend on what happens at the World Cup. But undoubtedly, Argentina are one of the favourites. And if they were to win the World Cup, they'll win it with with a Messi who's been not quite at his best this season, but still, a Messi not at his best this season scores 41 goals. Uh, so that's not too bad. <laughs> it's not shabby, uh, is it? Barcelona. So it? It would be fantastic to I see him. I he'll, think he'll do well. All right. Uh, Argentina, being one of Brazilians' uh, fiercest football rivals, will be favourite to get out of that group. Uh, the question is whether, of course, as the odds suggest, they can also make it through to the finals. <laughs> Now, one of the big groups, Group G, is Germany, Portugal. And you've also got Ghana and the USA in there. You must be confident of your country's ability to get out of that group. <sighs> A year ago, I would have been super confident. Um, the problem is that injuries have built up. I think the group being so unforgiving, I'm less optimistic than I would have been a few months ago. And I think the whole of Germany has calmed down a little bit. Uh, the Germany marketing slogan, though, ahead of the World Cup is ready like never before, which is a huge <laughs> sense of optimism. They really are not quite ready. Uh, unfortunately, they have no chance. Here's the giant doom gloom merchant, maybe because it's his own country. That's what do we you, do. <laughs> so as somebody who's slightly more neutral, do you think that we should have a bit more optimism for Germany than maybe Raphael does? Yeah, I do. I really do. And it's not, I'm not saying that because he's my friend, but I really do think that despite the injuries, there's still a bit of time to go as well before the, that, that key first game. Uh, Jack, Portugal are, are a team that had to come through a playoff to, make, to secure their berth in this year's World Cup. Um, but nonetheless, I would imagine that Portugal will get a fair amount of support in Brazil. Well, despite the shared language, there's not actually a great deal of common ground between the two on a sporting level. They're perhaps not the same level of animosity as there would be between Brazil and Argentina, but Portugal certainly wouldn't be the, the favourite team of many Brazilians outside the Portuguese community, of course, which, which is fairly big in some cities. Can you see Portugal getting anything from Germany or is it going to be against the other teams, Ghana and USA, in the group? Portugal will, I think, be happy to go through in second place. I don't think they'll receive too much of a challenge from the USA. Ghana have a lot of storied players, really, by now, who have kind of been around the block, but I don't see them as having quite the, the quality that Portugal have. For me, Germany and, and Portugal are, are way better than, than, than Ghana and USA. Uh, Portugal has... Uh, 
Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, which any set pieces they can uh, they can score a goal. And also a, a question on how you would contain Ronaldo if you were to come up against him. How can I say it's uh, <laughs> he's a difficult player for all. I mean it's. Uh, uh, he's a world star, and uh, I think yeah, as a defender, I, uh, I thought about that many times how to to play against a player like that. I think <laughs> you know we show him so many times he's he's lethal from every position he plays. Who gets out of the group behind uh, Germany for you? Oh, Portugal, yeah. Portugal all day long. Yeah, all not day all long. day long, but uh, they will. They will. Okay. Uh, general consensus: Germany and Portugal will be the teams to prevail from Group G. The greatest individual accolade that can go to anyone is a golden boot at the World Cup. So the question is, who this year will prevail in that category? Raphael. I'm going to go for a bit of an outside uh, bet in uh, Romelu Lukaku. Guaranteed to start for Belgium. Fairly easy group. Um, they might not go all the way, but scoring goals in the group stage might be enough in, uh, in a tournament. And it uh, wouldn't be the first time. So... Lukaku, odds would be good as well. I tell you what, that would make Chelsea Football Club think twice, I think, quite possibly. I don't uh, think Joseph thinks twice. Maybe not, Ever. maybe not. <laughs> Jack Lang, who's your pick then for Golden Boot at the World Cup? I don't think Spain have a system that really suits one guy grabbing a lot of goals, so I'm going to go for Brazilian, and I'm going to say Neymar, just because he's guaranteed to start every game. He's unlikely to be substituted even, because he's such a talisman for Brazil. He'll take their penalties, he'll take free kicks. He scored a lovely free kick against Panama in the warm-up game. Well, he's the player they rely on when they need something special, and I think he's, he's capable of doing it. Julian? I'll go for Aguero, actually. Because, again, he's, he's a certain stra starter. They will go really far. I think they're going to win it as well. And I think the opposition will focus on Messi, rightly so, which will leave a lot more space for Aguero, a lot of chances as well between him and Higuain. And he has played less than, than other key players this season because he's had a few injuries with City. But he ended up the season um, quite well with the title, obviously. And I think he would be full of confidence. He would be 100% fit. And like I said, not too tired. So I can definitely see him bagging five, six, seven goals. Jonathan? It, it, you know, if you're looking at that, you've got to look at somebody who's going to play seven games. So you're looking at somebody who's going to get to the semi-finals and then they'll have a final, the third and fourth place game. The obvious answers uh, are Messi and Neymar. The obvious answers for good reason. Uh, but because of that, you know, it's, it, they're not great odds. I'd, I'd look to, to other players in Brazil and Argentina. So I think Fred, is, is, who outscored Neymar in the Confederations Cup, is a good bet. I think possibly Higuain for Argentina. So either Fred or Higuain. Of course, the factor with um, Golden Boot is, of course, a team that go far enough in the tournament for someone to get loads of goals. Uh, interestingly, though, not one person on our panel has said Messi. And everyone's got an opinion on who's actually going to win the tournament. So I'm going to ask you to put your money where your mouth is. Tell me who you think will prevail. The host, Brazil, just can't look past them. I think they've got so much going for them. And they should top their group as well because that will give them a much easier route to the final. Julian? Argentina. I think it's their year. I think the curse of the Maracana, like in 1950, will strike again. And this time to the, um, to the benefits of, of, of Argentina. And I think that is Messi's year and it's Argentina's year. Very few people then can look past um, South American um, teams getting into the final and winning it. And Jack, any different? Uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go for the European team. I think Spain's demise has been greatly exaggerated. I think they have the, the squad. They have an enormous number of, of talented players. You look at their record in knockout stages. Defensively, it's unbelievable. Jonathan? If you'd asked me six weeks ago who my favourite to win it was, I'd have said Argentina. I, th I think the, the, the balance of the side is very, very good. But this injury to Gargo just raises doubts. I mean, I think he, he, he will play, but whether he's fully fit, I, I don't know. And so I'm, I'm tipping now towards Brazil. Ronnie, if you had to put your money where your mouth is, who do you <laughs> think will be the eventual winner of this year's World Cup? In the beginning, I thought Brazil. But I think every day goes past, I think... Argentina are going to win it, but I have to stick to Brazil because they're playing at home. And every World Cup has a team that surprises, thrills, entertains, even makes it all the way to sometimes the semi-finals. You got a dark horse team? Someone who might do well in the group stages, someone like Japan. I think they've got a lot of talent and they, they look quite neat and tidy in the Confederations Cup last summer. Maybe even England could, could nip into the quarterfinals, which would probably be above expectations. Dark horses, gentlemen? Belgium. I will go for Belgium. I think they're so talented. It's a golden generation. And, uh, and I can see them you know, going easily well, to, to the knockout stages for sure, but maybe even quarterfinals. 
Uh, who's your dark horse, Raf? Yeah, well, I don't see any dark horses making to the semis. I think the squad. Oh, boo. The, I'm sorry. I think the quality <laughs> of the more established sides is just too strong to let another Uruguay into the into the top four. But as far as a bit of impact, a bit of momentum is concerned, I agree with Jack. I think England actually might do better than a lot of people think. And also a team to watch out, maybe at Colombia. But also what can happen in a World Cup is a player can come to the fore that maybe we weren't expecting. Um, so we're asking you to pick a player that you think will do well in the World Cup. Keep a lookout for a couple of Swiss players, Shakiri and Drimic, relatively unknown on the big stage. Um, Rakitic for Croatia, I think he's a fantastic player. Juan Corrado for Colombia, who had a great season for Fiorentina as well. Paul Pogba, we said Marco Verratti with Italy. There's a few really good young players coming through as well, and, and, uh, and they, they could be the breakthrough players in this World Cup. The Unibet Road to Rio Challenge is live on our website and, of course, on all our social media buttons as well, on Twitter, uh, on Facebook and, of course, on our YouTube channel. Uh, and, of course, don't forget that all of the guys featured here today are giving expert comment through Unibet for the duration of the World Cup. It's bet.unibet.com. Uh, thank you very much to Raf and Julian, uh, to our Skype video panel, uh, Jonathan Wilson, Jack Lang and to Ronnie Johnson. And thanks for watching.